for me to get uh, my reference line, which is the the position of the appropriate position of a diaphragm during normal tidal breaths. All right. So I expect, of course, for almost every if you're going to be below the scapula, can you clap your clap your hands across? Um, so I'm going to start from. I know I'm expecting his seated to be somewhere here, so I'll just go down and notice where I notice a change in that percussion note. Note that I'm not on the vertebrae, I'm not on the transverse process, I'm in the lungs. The same point, the mid-clavicular line. Can you hear? No, we won't be hearing anything different, but you can just, you know, you're going down. So he's, uh, he's going down on the chest, and at one point the sound is going to Going to go from See, my sound just down. changed. Okay. All this. So the, the, the patients will be breathing normally um, when you're just trying to assess where the normal FRC level of the diaphragm is. You're, you're breathing quietly. So the patient is breathing normally. So at this point where this change, I'm going to mark it. All right, I don't have a marker here. So this is my reference point. Then I'm going to have the patient. Me, David, uh, there's no point in putting the mic next to the chest. We don't really hear the, the percussion notes. So okay. it's just to demonstrate it. Okay, okay. so at this point, I'm going to ask the patient to take a deep breath. And if the patient breathes in, should the diaphragm go up or down? Down. So I'm going to move down to find the diaphragm again. So this point that was dull should become resonant. So take a deep breath and hold it. Relax. So, so my, the sound that is resonant would become dull. Becomes dull again. So I mark this point. And then I go back to my reference line. And as the patient to breathe in and breathe out completely. Breathe in and breathe out completely and becomes dull again, and I keep going up. So now by going up, so he's looking for the spot. Becomes resonant again, relax. So I'm going to measure the distance between this and this. Note that I'm going one finger breath after each other. If I go from this and go to this, I jump the segment, and that would be my point where the diaphragm is. So one finger breath down on top of each other. So I use the Upmost and the lowest. The first reference line, I'm not using it to measure. It's just to make it easy for me to get to the position of the diaphragm without the patient holding the breath for too long. All right. Okay, so let us practice in the rooms, and if there's any other.